Hi there, in this video we are going to look at adding a logo to Premiere Pro. There are some quirky things that go along with Vector inside of Premiere Pro, plus we're gonna try and make something reasonably complex with your essential graphics panel so that we can show you A, how to work with it and some of the tips and tricks for getting it right. All right, uh, let's dive in. All right, so you might've been building the co-working project, you might not have been. Um, I've got a file here that you can all catch up with, so I'm gonna open a project. Okay, it is in your exercise files, it is under uh, co-working, okay, and it's called co-working v1. When you open it up, you might be missing footage, okay, and you can go and find that in the exercise files if it loads up, okay, and it looks something like this is where we're up to at the moment. You can rebuild it from here, up to you, okay, this is kind of all I want is a bit of this last part of the structure. Yours might look something close enough to this. Okay, so adding a logo, what I want to do is we can add the logo by itself by clicking over here and saying uh, uh, browse, edit, actually click off so nothing selected, okay, and then go to new and go to um, uh, from file. And that's where we can bring our logo file. And what I want to do is combine it with one of these two. I want to combine it with this bottom one here. Okay, so uh, the bottom graphic in this case is just the colored box. So I'm going to we're gonna combine it mainly because I wanna show you how to combine stuff um, and so that our layers not getting out of control kind of Photoshop style, untitled 52. Okay, so we just want a couple of simple tracks in here or layers as they, uh, you know, we call them in other programs. Okay, so I'm gonna have this bottom graphic selected. I'm gonna be at the beginning for no reason just to be the beginning. Okay, and I've already got a shape. I'm gonna name it, double click it. This is called my background. Okay, I'm gonna import another thing, it could be text, okay, we're going to go from file, and we're going to bring in under co-working, there's one called logo co-work outlined, okay, it's an Adobe Illustrator file, okay, so I'm going to import that, and it ends up behind everything, I want to move it up and over here, so with it selected here in my graphics panel, I'm just going to drag it left and right, okay, I'll actually we'll just drag it up first, and across, you can get it perfectly aligned by, can you see here, there's these ones here, it says vertical center, horizontal center. The moment mine's kind of behind this um, book here, but that might work for you for what you need to do. Uh, you align the top, bottom, left, right, all of these things, okay? Uh, what I wanna do is ignore all that and get it exactly where I want, okay? Which is kind of in the top right here. Now one thing to notice is, do you notice that when we added, say the background kind of square, nothing appeared over here in our project panel, but when we imported this thing from Illustrator, you'll see, there it is over there, it comes as part of the project file. Now the first thing you're probably gonna do is then go off and search, why is it going blurry when I scale it? Okay, so let's, with the, with the logo outlines uh, selected here, you can either scale it here, we'll kind of show you both ways. Um, you can do it in the effects controls, which gets a little bit messy, or over here, you can say, actually, let's scale this up. And it's that one there, drag it to the right. Can you see there that actually it's starting to go all blurry? Okay, and that's not you, it's Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is not cut out to do vector. I don't know why. But um, it doesn't do something like After Effects, which does like continuous rasterization. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but it doesn't work you can't scale it up. <laughs> so if you have no idea how to edit the vector, you're gonna have to go back to the original creator and say, can I have a bigger logo please? So you're looking for the biggest one to import. It doesn't have to be vector because it's not scalable anyway. It can be pixelated, uh, you know, sorry, a raster image, a PNG, a JPEG. Um, ideally we want vector, but Premiere Pro doesn't know what to do with it. If you did decide I wanna scale it up, okay, let's say we do have to scale it. Okay, what you need to do is edit it in Illustrator. You might not have the skills to do it. I'll give you a quick demo. So over here, okay, I can go to this one. I can right click it and say, scroll down the bottom, edit original. Okay, so I've just right clicked it. So edit original, it's gonna open up in Adobe Illustrator. And if you don't really know how to use it, don't worry. If you're only scaling things, really all you need to do is uh, select it. Okay, I'm using this tool here. Drag it out the size you need it to be, holding shift so it doesn't scale. So let's say I want it to be about double the size. Okay, you want it bigger than you need it. <laughs> zooming everywhere okay uh, so get it the kind of size you want it and then the artboard that it came off it's really easy to adjust this is a handy tip if you click on your artboard tool and say I would like the artboard to be not a custom size but I want it to fit the selected art okay if you don't have the text select or uh, your graphic selected okay so select it all if you can't see it and you're like hey I'm doing this with Dan and it's not working uh, hit command Y Okay, it'll go from being kind of white see-through to this outline view. Select it all, artboard tool, and say, let's set the artboard to fit the selected art. Hit save, 
Jump back into Illustrator and you'll notice, can you see it doubled in size? Okay, I don't need it to at the moment, but you will, I betcha. I made the logo perfect for this. Uh, so yes, there is. there might be in the future. If in the future Premiere Pro starts doing Vector Suite, you let me know in the comments and let everyone else know. I'm gonna go back to here, undo it, save it, close it. It's a nice little connection, right? You don't have to like update it or re-import it. That's nice. Cool, so we've got our logo in here. Let's uh, do the animation for, we're gonna get it to fade in. Okay, do a bit of practice. And we'll do it on both sides, just because I know it can be a bit daunting with both sides here. So I've got my graphics selected here. I've got the logo selected. I'm gonna go to the beginning. I'm holding shift to make sure it snaps to the beginning. Okay, and I'm gonna say set a keyframe for opacity, which is this one. Okay, and I want it to start at zero and then move along some time. I'll have to adjust it in a second and then to get it to come up. And you can just do it that way. That might be a nice way of working. Hit spacebar, let's play it. Can you see it fades in? in, there you go. Shift K, remember, is the kind of jump back and loop around. Yeah. All right, I can live with that. And um, I'm gonna undo that and do it over here. You should just practice doing it both ways as well. Um, okay, so same thing, back at the beginning, I've got my graphic selected, I've got the logo selected over here, and I just need to find the right one. So I'm gonna twirl up my video, when we're dealing with like motion graphics, okay, we want to be dealing with this graphics tab, nothing down here in video, okay, because you can do opacity. And in this case, to be honest, it didn't work fine. Don't tell anyone, but you should be using the vector versions. So I can do one of two things. I can do the animation of the entire group, which is this vector motion, which will do both the logo and my background. I'll show you what I mean. You see, I can do, can you do opacity? <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it for vector motion. Good work, Dan. Uh, you'd have to do it down here. And if I did it down here, you could do it for both of them. Okay, so it does the background and the graphic, and you might be totally looking to do that. To do them individually, let's find not the background, but the logo. Let's twirl it down. Let's set a keyframe for the beginning of opacity. Go along some time, and then actually go back to the beginning. holding shift to make sure it snaps, uh, turn it to zero at the beginning. So set the little timer, set it to zero, move along a little bit, set it to 100. You are exactly the same thing as doing it over here, like that first bit. All right, I'm gonna add one more thing in here because I want to before we carry on. You saw at the beginning there, we had a bit more text. Okay, so with this graphic down the bottom here, I'm gonna add a second bit of text. I'm gonna say mm, another bit of text. This one's going to be, uh, welcome to your new, can't see it because it's behind everything. That's all right. I'm going to move it kind of over and up. Probably best when you're working with it is to make sure you spell it right. And um, you can double click it over here to adjust the text. Okay. Welcome to, you can double click it on here. Can you see actually on the program window to jump to the right one, which is handy. Okay, welcome to your new. And you can see my mask here. I've got this phone that's kind of in the way. I think when I originally planned this video, I planned to cut the phone out. This gives me a really good excuse to show you how to update that. Um, so I'm gonna make sure my text is centered so that when I do adjust the size, it goes from the middle. Get it in the right spot. Oh, we can use our shortcut. Okay, and I'm gonna mess around with this mask now. So where is the mask? It is on there. I'm gonna go back to my Mm, opacity, there's a mask in there with it selected. I'm going to grab you, drag it down. Now to get rid of this guy, you need to hold down the command key on a Mac, control key on a PC. Okay, and just, you can see the little minus appears and say, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. And this is my plan for this thing. I'm gonna go straight across. Actually, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a couple more points, so maybe you, and I'm gonna go. What are you doing, Dan? <laughs> Making a straight thing across there. Get rid of that phone. Uh, so I click off in the background, so now I can see you welcome to your new. So there we go. I'm gonna pick two fonts, 
Um, cause I, I picked Arial for you guys just so that it didn't freak out with new fonts when you opened it up, if you carried along. Uh, anything else? I'm gonna mess with the fonts in between videos. Uh, what I'm gonna do before you go is get the timing right. Oh, and there's one other bonus thing I wanna show you. So I've got that coming in. Let's say that I do want Cowork to be down here. Okay, so it's currently here on this bottom layer. Okay, so if I move it down, because it's underneath the, uh, this middle part here, okay, I can't see it. You're like, well, I need it up here now. How do I do that? So if you do need that to happen, you can have it selected. Okay, click on the logo. Okay, just go straight up Command X for cut. Okay, or Control X on a PC. That's just, you know, when we're cutting and pasting, just regular old shortcut. Okay, select it at the top here and say paste. It'll go from this essential graphics to this one here at the top. Okay, so now it's on top and I can move it down. Click on just the part I want, Home Office, nope, the logo, and I can move it down. I don't wanna do that, but you can. Just, you can cut and paste between them. Other useful things when we are getting to these kind of like bigger groups of essential graphics. Okay, there's lots going on in that one little clip. Okay, you can see over here, we can start doing groups. Okay, you might decide all your text goes into one, or test. Okay, and all the text goes into one group. Okay, and you might have, let's say, Make sure we, you can see the group ended up inside text. I'm gonna undo and just have nothing selected. Click in no man's land to do a group that is not kind of inside that first one. Let's go double click this one. This is gonna be my logos. Mine's not complex enough. Mine never get complex enough to break these into little groups. It's totally up to you. Okay, you might get really complex or at least all the text needs to go or you just wanna hide everything except for the couple of bits of text that you can edit and adjust quickly. Obviously layer order is quite important. So background, if it's at the top, covers everything. Background needs to be at the bottom. I'm gonna do one more thing before we go is I'm gonna get that welcome to to animate on. So make sure at the beginning of your clip, okay, with it selected, welcome to your new, I'm gonna say start the uh, talk of the animation for position on. And I'm gonna start it up. Okay, if you always drag it the wrong one and the wrong way, don't worry, I do it all the time. Do you go up there? Then after some time, maybe, yeah, there, it's gonna come down. How far? Don't go the wrong way. All right, let's work on the easing. Okay, so let's have a look at just this one. Let's say show clip frames for, this is getting pretty complex now. It's all right, we know what we're doing. We're not looking for the logo. We're looking for the text that says, welcome for your new. I wanna show the transform position. Okay, and I'm gonna see if I can zoom a little bit. Now I want to click on this, drag this, be freaked out by how crazy it looks. And I'm going to drag it like this. So I want this kind of like, I like that sort of look to it. <laughs> yep, that'll do. A bit of easing. All right, the timing's not quite right. One last thing before we go, let's, let's just do that. I want the welcome to your new to come in and then home office afterwards. So with the home office selected, uh, because that's the only thing on there, there's only one thing, I can just go, yep. <laughs> okay, rather than mess with the keyframes. Okay, let's have a look at the end. It's probably poking off the end here. And um, one last tip, I said there was no more tips, is the rate stretch tool. If you have got the timing and it's not quite right, okay, you wanna make it fast or slow, you can get in here and start messing with keyframes, but if they're complex, you're like, man, just type the R key for our rate stretch tool, okay, and this guy here, grab the end and you can speed it up and the whole thing, all the keyframes in there, can you see, come along for the ride. So I made it faster, or I can drag it out to be slower. I can do that, okay. And then go back to your normal tool and kind of get it the timing right. That'll do. Mm. All right, off camera, I'm gonna pick new fonts. I'll see you in the next video. I lied, I'm back already. Hey, there's the fonts I picked. Um, I wanted to show you something because I ran into a problem. Uh, I saved over the file that I meant to save for you guys. It's meant to be nice and clean and be an aerial, but I just totally saved over the top of it. So I wanted to show you a quick thing is there is a, sometimes you can go to file revert and that will go back to the last time it was saved. It's grayed out for my, for whatever reason. So I'm like, oh, how do I go all the way back? I can smash through undo 
Okay, that totally works. Or I can go to window, I can go to history. Okay, and you might only want to go halfway through, but you can see these are all the things that I did. I am going to now go back and say, go all the way back here to where we started and do a save as so that you've got this nice clean version. Anyway, that's a history panel thrown in there at the end of this video. All right, that is totally it this time. I'll see you in the next video.